Yeah. So that's why I want it over here. So they don't need point finger at each other when they're not here. It's good to point finger when you're not here, right? <laughs> but if you're right here in front of us, no care. The Michelle's here. Because, yeah. Okay, so uh, we let's go here. Uh, go ahead and introduce these two guys, and they can go ahead and tell you guys what the hell they did. Go ahead. Thank you, yeah. oh. I'm Michelle McLean. I'm the planning director, and this is Jordan Hart, uh, the deputy planning director. And I am sorry that Sandy couldn't be here. Um, but when it comes to pointing fingers, we are the responsible department. So there are two main issues relating to this structure. One has to do with SMA and one has to do with the building permit. Our department doesn't issue building permits. That is the public works department. That's the department that Rowena oversees. But we're responsible for signing off on the building height relating to zoning. So even though her department issues the building permit, in terms of the building height, we're the ones who signed off on that. So in terms of pointing fingers, you can point them at us. Um, relating to the building permit, the building height in this zoning district is two stories. It doesn't have a number of feet. And we are going through our zoning code and amending the zoning district so that it says feet because stories can be different. In this case, we use the measurement of 35 feet for two stories. In addition to the 35 feet, we allowed an additional 10 feet for the stairwells and the elevator shafts. That to me is questionable. Yes. I don't know that we should have done that. Okay. There are zoning districts that specifically allow that and other zoning districts are silent on that. In this zoning district, it just says two stories. That's the issue with the building permit. With the SMA exemption, the SMA, SMA stands for Special Management Area, and that comes from Federal Coastal Zone Management Law. It's the coastal environment. So when you're doing any kind of development in the coastal area, you have to go through SMA review to determine that development's potential impact on the coastal zone. And that comes from federal law originally, then state law, and then our local county rules. In the SMA, there in state law, there is a list of actions that can be exempt from having to get an SMA permit. One of those exemptions is a home of up to 7,500 square feet, period. Doesn't talk about how fancy the home is, how many bedrooms the home has. If it's 7,500 feet or less, you can get an SMA exemption. Almost every single family home you see in the coastal area got one of those exemptions. And that's what this home got. So that's something else that we're looking at should we have issued that exemption it does fall under the 7500 square feet counting all of the enclosed areas of the house that need to be counted we there is an opportunity for us to say even though you miss even though you fit these exemption categories we're not going to exempt you because we think that you could have significant environmental or ecological effects, in which case you have to get a permit. In this case, the planner who issued the exemption looked at cultural resources because the State Historic Preservation Division reviewed the plans, looked at biological studies to review potential impacts on native plants and animals, and other things like that before he issued his exemption. If any of those things had said, hey, there might be impacts from this, we could have and would have required a permit. But in, in this case, after he did his evaluation, he determined that it qualified for an exemption. Who? I'm sorry? Who? The staff planner who issued the So where the he's permit. there? I'm sorry? Where is he at? He's uh, on leave right now, on approved leave. <laughs> is that for a single family home? It's for a single family home, correct. But, but this has obvious 
but this is not a single family home. This is, this is two homes. This is built. There's two homes. There's two entrances, two kitchens, two pools. So, so how do they? How do we reconcile that? On the original plans, you're right. There were two full kitchens. Under our code, it's really a kitchen that determines that something is a dwelling. So that second kitchen uh, was reduced down to a wet bar which is defined in the zoning code. Um, homes can have up to two wet bars. It's specific on the size of the sink and other things that can. So Michelle, you know, there's a lot of people that try to pull this, you know, and then they come in and they say, oh, we got to take your oven out. And then as soon as they move in, they put the oven out. And the county certainly is aware of these shenanigans that are happening. Hang on, you guys. And, and and when somebody is obviously trying to usurp the rules, I don't care if your planner made a mistake, do you not have the ability to revoke that permit and, and, and do something that, you know, that's consistent with the intent of the community, the intent of the SMA? So, so how are we addressing that now? Yep, that's, that's a great comment. Um, if we do make uh, obvious mistakes, permits can be rescinded. Um, let's say in this case we said we shouldn't have issued that exemption, we shouldn't have signed off on the building permit, we're going to revoke the exemption, we're going to revoke the building permit. Right. This owner's next step is obviously going to be to take legal action against us. Right. And so if that were to go through the court process, we likely would be uh, assessed for millions of dollars that we would have to pay. Yeah. Um, if we wanted to work with the owner to make changes, then if any of those changes result in money that the county has to pay out, that would have to be approved by the county council. We have had this discussion with the mayor, and we have initiated the discussion with the council. Well, and there were obvious misrepresentations. Yeah, that's the in, problem. In, 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 then, then that takes the county off of the hook if there are obvious misrepresentations, both on the SMA and the building permit, then, then the county no longer is on the hook because the developer created the problem. Yeah, that, you know, that would definitely the county council is going after people for all kinds of Manini things. You would certainly think that they would be supportive Amen. of that kind of action to hold the developer responsible. That's definitely something that would be discussed for the county to, the county in general, but it is the council and the mayor to agree to some kind of settlement or resolution for this property. Do you think, you think that there was anything... Read you know, your hand, Holly. What? Read your hand. Yeah. So now, but it's like it some, just be somebody else like that. Okay, yeah, and I'm not trying, but, but you know, was there was there anything really improper with whoever signed off on this permit? You know, was there something? You know, I know what everybody else is thinking. Somebody got an envelope full of cash. Yep. Right. You know, yep. because it's so wrong. I mean, it doesn't take a genius <laughs> to look at this. Yep. So, any 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 comment on something like that? Um. I can say that the county attorneys are, are, I don't want to say looking into it, but they are, they are determining if there is an action that should be taken in that regard. Okay. Good, good. Hello. A lot of us uh, look at some of these things and other projects, and it's obvious that uh, they're pulling the wool over your eyes. I mean, I would think for as many projects as we've seen, certainly your department and your staff has seen, you can practically anticipate when somebody is not really uh, following the spirit of the law, their intent is not uh, honest, and you can practically smell it. And it makes me uh, think, uh, I, you know, I just feel like uh, the county should be more diligent and proactive about these things especially given how much experience you have, you can smell it, a problem coming. And so, uh, you know, a friend of mine in the bigger picture said, to his knowledge, uh, the county has only permanently disallowed two projects in the last many years. And I'm curious to know the extent to which that's true, but I sort of feel like 
if, uh, if you can smell a problem happening, that the guy is not following the spirit of the law and so forth, um, it sort of feels like some of the departments in the county work for developers and the residents work for the county, when in fact uh, county workers, everybody at 200 South High Street is a public servant, you know, working for us. And so as an advocate, uh, I and others, like the Maui Coast Hotel, we can't stop it. The residents don't want it. It does nothing for us. And so this is the problem. We know that you can smell a problem coming, whether technically it's there or not. And once we see that there's a problem, we still can't seem to feel empowered as residents. And these things do nothing for the island. They do nothing for the residents. But, you know, so it's the spirit of the law, your ability to anticipate these things. How does it get this far, you know? Surely you have the experience to anticipate that they're going the wrong way. Uh, that's a, a, a great comment, a great question. When we look at the SMA exemption, which was the first approval that was needed for this to happen, ever since this came to our attention over the last few months, we've been talking with staff about issuing those exemptions. When does it rise? When does it rise to the level of bringing it to your supervisor or bringing it to Jordan and me versus when do you think, oh, this is a routine thing, I'm just going to sign off. And so we've been having those discussions internally. With this project in particular, the planner did meet with the Napili Bay and Beach Foundation and presented the plans and said, we're looking at this and processing this. Um, and didn't get a whole lot of negative feedback, or if he got any negative feedback at all. Um, was so, that a, a <coughs> meeting that was noticed? I don't, I don't think know. that was a notice meeting. I, I don't know. I don't know. Um, well, honestly, this is part of my comment, uh -huh. and I, I like you as a person. I have gotten to know you through testimony and so forth, and so I completely respect you as a person. I think there's a corporate culture in the county that is generous about issuing these permits and so forth, but the lady made a comment about uh, is there adequate public no notice and awareness about these things, and I've seen, seen this happen time and again, where, and not only that, but residents are really they're fed up because they feel powerless it doesn't matter how many 10 hours of testimony for Maui Coast or it doesn't matter what we say or do it, it, we're going to be ineffective at uh, speaking our will and so the, you know I appreciate your comment about them asking for public comment but all of us don't think that that really was done aggressively with good communication and my other point that I was trying to make is that you can smell a problem now technically you can go through the rules and does it technically meet this that or the other thing but we're all adults you know I'm a business person we know that something is headed in the wrong direction and we don't have to you know look at a like little nitpicky th we know pretty much what's going on yeah. and so this is the question I appreciate the planning person going to the local community and so forth but we I think we don't believe that it's in earnest and that the person and the department yourself ostensibly should be more proactive and aggressive a about preventing things like this and mm -hmm. what we feel like are so many other we feel like you should be more aggressive about those proactive yeah. um. Yeah, I, I hear you and I don't disagree with that at all. At the same time, I have to be mindful of the, the ongoing, which has been going on for decades. You have to streamline the permit process. You have to make it more efficient. Um, so it sounds like you're counter... Uh, no, I... Better answer. Yeah, I'm so what sorry. I'm saying is, is having to balance those things. Like, what is the right level of streamlining where things can just happen routinely at a staff level versus when are there things that should have more of a, a public notice, public involvement component. Right now, under state law, that, that line is drawn at 
homes that are 7,500 square feet and smaller. Um, that's what state law says. That's not to say we can't make it more restrictive on the county level um, or to have a public notice process before an exemption is issued, for example. Mm -hmm. The way the rules work now is anytime we issue a, an exemption or a minor permit, minor permits don't have a public review process either. Minor permits are for actions that can't be exempt, but are less than $500,000. That's also in state law. Okay. So those two types are required once that permit is issued or exemption is issued, that needs to be, the planning commission needs to be notified at their next meeting. Mm -hmm. So if you look at planning commission agendas, it always has a list of exemptions and minor permits that have been issued. And that, the, that meeting date is what starts an appeal process. And so, okay, that's good. It gets noticed out there that starts the appeal process, but it's after the fact. And I think what you're asking for, in which I, I think warrants a lot more discussion at our part, how do we get that notification before the fact? So if there is public input and concern, we know it before we sign off. Is this an under $500,000 project? <laughs> no, because if, you're, if you meet those exemptions, a home of 7,500 square feet or less, you're exempt regardless of the valuation. I hear that if he was going to do short-term rentals, he needs an FMA. So, to me, that house is going to be there. That it's a spec house from a developer. He's going to sell it, obviously, for whatever he thinks he's going to sell it. And that whoever buys it has to know through whatever disclosure that it's going to, he can't rent it because he would need an SMA permit to do short-term rentals. How do, how does the county oversee that it's not sold as a short-term or used as a short-term? In terms of it being sold as short-term, so I know one of the things that folks have uh, used as an indicator of short-term rental use is the real property tax class. And we've notified them, you know, we did write them a letter saying we cannot do short-term rental. Under the real property tax class, it shows the short-term rental, and that's because they update that twice a year. So the next update's not going to happen until July. But in the meantime, they put on their webpage of no short-term rental use. Because we've written to them as a seller's disclosure, they would have to they would have to disclose the letter that they got. So that should be sufficient to inform a buyer that they're not allowed to do it. Now, if the buyer buys it and then goes ahead and does it anyway, then that would end up being enforcement from our point, like any other illegal short term. Maybe. Mr. Tree Soda, I'd like to connect. Thank you, Director. Thank you for coming. Would you, Michelle, could you walk them through what the current community plan is and the zoning, as well as the overlay district, as far as what force and effect those have of law? Um, that's for you. Yep, that's okay. um, the, the underlying zoning is the Nepali Bay Civic Improvement District. That's a specific zoning district with permitted uses that include hotel use, um, the height of two stories. Um, and so that's what we look at with the building permit. When it comes to community plan, if you're exempt, I believe the community plan designation is multifamily, which island-wide under multifamily community plan designation, you can have apartments, you can have single-family homes. When you uh, are eligible for an SMA exemption, your building permit has to comply with zoning, but you don't have to comply with the community plan. In this case, it is compliant with the community plan, uh, but exemptions 
don't have to be consistent with the community. Yes, ma'am. Hi. Um, I've been impacted by this immensely. I live next door. And I've seen the retaining wall go up, the so-called retaining wall. There was nothing retaining. They never had a, a kickback. It, it's just a rock wall. It's just like this wall. And it's even the grade to the benchmark. I'm a general contractor. The grade to the benchmark is even higher than the retaining wall. And I, I asked him, I said, well, is this a retaining wall? And he said, yeah. And it was a foot of maybe like about 18 inches wide, but there's no, no dead man's on there. I'll wait for you guys. Is there a permit? Yeah, and, what, and the other thing was, Shirley, Shirley correct? Your, your first Michelle. name? Michelle. Michelle. And um, the other thing was, was there a grading permit for the retaining wall? Was that ever pulled? I had to pull teeth with this guy for two and a half years now. He never put up a dust screen fence. Dan's place across the street got dusted out. He just, he kind of steps where he wants to and squashes people. And I don't like that, you know? It's not very, um, cond it's just uh, condescending, if anything. And I, I felt those, uh, I gave him a cleaning uh, bill and he said he'd split it with me. When I gave it to him and split it with him, it's $1,500 to pressure wash him, he laughed at me and said, I'm not paying that. And I, so I personally gone through a lot with this guy and I've had it up to here. You know, I just think, I look at it, I went to the mainland recently and got back about a month ago and I looked at, went even higher and I'm just thinking, how did this happen? You know, I, I feel we live in a fishbowl and I'm selling my home now because of this impact. And I, I'm saddened by it. I mean, and I thought I built paradise and now I have to go somewhere else and build it. You know, and it, it's sad. Yeah. I, I'm sorry to hear that. Uh, I, I don't know about the grading permit and the wall. But Could I, you look I, into I that look into and that. see? For sure. Thank you so much. Hey, well, my name is Dan, and my family built this place here. I come from an unusual perspective because we tried to buy that land, the two lots, and used uh, Mr. Hart's father, Chris Hart. The amount of work that we had to do before a pebble could be moved was staggering. I can't believe that this guy went through anything like that. I mean, I had to dig for bones, shoreline projects, traffic studies, park rebuilds, parking. We had to do like about a million dollars worth of improvements, HUD housing, before we were even going to be able to build. So it seems to me he zigzagged his way through the planning department at different departments using different standards for each permit. And that's how he got through to be able to do this. But it doesn't make sense to me. I mean, we quit after the million dollar mark. We said no more, and we were out. Dan, did you have to do a community plan amendment and a rezone application? Yes, we for did. That? Yeah, we did. And, and Mr. Hart, his father, this helped land us do is that. Zone residential. Correct. Correct. Not Correct. hotel. Not hotel. Zone McNeely Bay That's the overlay zone, which yeah. allows multiple usages, including residential, including hotels, and including apartments. If you yeah. go in underneath the code and you read about this district it has this is a multi-use district so this property is different than that property this property is zoned residential am i correct yeah. no let me let me clarify then why does the application say residential? so what what might be being missed is what michelle had talked about a moment ago there's a difference between what's considered to be a development in the special management area which triggers a permit and there's what's exempt from a development. Up a bit, what's Let's exempt from forward. development does not. So in the SMA, what's not considered to be development in the context of HRS 205A are things like single family dwellings. There's a number of other things, renovations to existing structures, but this was represented to the department as a single family dwelling. Michelle talked about it like a lot of bedrooms but but they represented throughout the process that this would be for a single family um, and they didn't represent that they would be doing short-term rental needs. so there's a little bit of an issue on the on the structures on top of the roof the heights of those but as far as being a two-story structure it, it complies with that context of it there's no there's no height definition for the stories in the code so if you're proposing to build a multi-family development or a, par a condo hotel 
that's considered to be development in the special management area, and that would re because the value is over five hundred thousand dollars, no doubt. If planning is is getting up to a million, that that would require an SMA major permit, and there's public hearing process and notification right. and things like that. There's a section in HRS 205A that's carved out for the average, you know, Hawaii homeowner that's supposed to not subject them to the entire process. They do an abbreviated process and they get an exemption just to build a home. Now the limit in order to cover the entire state of Hawaii is 7,500 feet. So when you're under that, you technically qualify for an exemption. And so there was a question about why don't we proactively, you know, basically perceive who's overdoing that or not. And, you know, basically, in order to determine that if somebody's proposing something under the state's threshold for an exemption, for the department to conclude that this doesn't qualify, you have to find something you know really notable. Well, and uh, what was that? Twelve bedrooms. Is Walking bedroom. An elevator. The number of okay. So the number. <laughs> of, How about the elevator? Way. That would have been a good cue. <laughs> well, I mean, there's there's wealthy people in this state. Like so to say that you you can't have a, a elevator in your home. I mean, to. The specific response I wanted to give to this gentleman is that is that there has to be a limit of what the develop the department does to try and interpret what a person says they're going to do. If they submit something in writing to the planning department, there has to be some level of expectation that they're being honest with the department. Um, there does, I mean, because not, if we uh, are just saying, what was that? Are they not being honest? I don't see. I, okay, well, well, let, let's let's, let's to, to get into that though. You know, there's there's the the height issue. Uh, you know, which the department, you know, has to, to look at itself on whether or not we interpreted that correctly. But if anything else that they've done, you know, they may have not been a good neighbor, but as far as operating illegally, so far they're just in a construction project. So they haven't actually done anything that the department can say they've done wrong so far. So what I was trying to say is that the department has to allow people to make the representations that they're going to make as a citizen and do the things that they're going to do before we can say you've done wrong. If you, if you submit to us the documentation that's within our rules and we process that, you know, we can ask follow-up questions, but to just tell somebody, you know, you're lying to us, you've submitted something and, and this is not what you're going to do, like we don't, we're not able to proactively tell somebody that, and that wouldn't be appropriate. So, how you guys know what case is bugger it? Right. So, that, that, you, you understand, you said, yeah. you guys said, there's a little bit of, you guys got a <coughs> part of untrust, yeah? But, I'm uh, sorry. Right. You, gotta, oh. you, gotta, you gotta go, you guys gotta do your job okay. and make sure they're doing them. Yeah, you get them. Make, you know, you know, because I tell you right now, if we never grumble about this, how the hell you guys gonna know? Sure. Huh? You guys answer that one. That's a simple question. Yeah, sure. no, no, you're right. And so, uh, so Michelle did bring that up. Is that basically that there's a discussion about how to, what does the county do when there's when there's a situation that needs to be evaluated, potentially a mistake that's been made by the county. There there has to be a, a financial cost to that, and that decision is made on the mayor and this council level, like so that the the director could just stop building permits, but then collectively the community has to pay for the results of that. Why are we gonna pay? That well. If, if, for so there you go, for you guys a mistake? Well, that's basically how, it, if a representation, a representative of the, of the county, you know, makes a mistake on behalf of the county and it's properly issued and the landowner, and the same thing could happen to any of you, you, but. you rely on that approval and you, you know, take action and you make financial expenditures, then the county does have responsibility there. So that you can't just stop them and tell them you need to tear this all down at your own expense if they're relying on approvals that have been properly granted. Has there been any outreach from the, from the government to him to say, let's, let's talk about what this means, this comes down, how much will it cost us? I'll, I'll let you. At this point in time. It's better, obviously, now than when it's complete. Uh, you know? Not yet. We've had general dialogue, but we haven't gotten into that kind of specifics um, because uh, that's really, I can't make that kind of call that, yeah, we'll pay you $5 million if you do this, because the county council has to approve that. And so that's why we've initiated the dialogue with the county council, so we can have that discussion with them, that if we are getting, getting to that point of saying we want to see these changes and negotiating that cost, that has to... The county council needs to be involved in that discussion because they're the ones that would have to approve the dollar. So this wait, wait, wait. So uh, wait up. Well, 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 well. My thing is, you talk about trust. How we can trust any of you guys? You guys haven't been good to us. Right. Period. 
I don't have any trust in any of you guys. Kani, Tonti, how can we trust you guys? Trust is a give and take kind of a thing. If you guys had our trust, you guys wouldn't be having so much resilience. You know, I, I born and raised here. I, I have Coco here. It makes me angry. I only have been following you guys for a little while. But this little while has really blown me. Really blown me. How can we trust any of you guys? That's my thing. You know, for you guys to trust the developers, trust, that's, you guys giving the trust too easily. You know, it's about time thinking about us. You know, it devastates me when my family got to leave to America for make a life. That they don't can even make a life here because of things like this. It devastates me. I cry, it breaks me. My thing is, how can we trust any of you? I feel like I'm talking to walls. That's how I feel. That's but true. I will keep on speaking. Thank you. Because I get more. Yeah. I get my more tuners. I get my daughter. Even though we don't pass away, we still have family. That I gotta wonder if they could have one place here. You know, I bought a home. 179,000 is affordable for me. You know? But it's not affordable for my my child. You know, now, nowadays, like this. It's, it's crazy. And for that things like this happen, unreal. Like, we we are the community, and yet we doing your guys' job. Yeah, we know. We're looking out. Thank you. We're watching everything. And it, is, it shouldn't even be that. You know, but we don't care about the money. It's not about the money. It's about us. Us. Residents. So, yes, residents. Residents. That's right. Okay, that's residents. why I, I want to reiterate what you're saying. That's why we have one, two, three, four, four Hawaiians over here. Because the white people, the local people of this community don't trust you guys. You don't come here. Why we don't go over there for ground? We're not going to be heard. That's the whole We are not heard. We are not heard as a, as a community oh. people. The people who were born and raised here, we have roots here. We have roots from... My roots come from from B Lati, pre B Lati time, on my Hawaiian side. I have royal blood going to me. And as a Kodohiki, as a descendant of real Ali'i, I cry. Yeah. I cry because Hawaiians cannot, cannot afford none of this. None of this. None of this. None of it. That's the whole thing. This guy can do whatever the hell he like. A lot of these people I know, I don't have Danny, the coach over there. These guys are here, they do stuff for our community. They come and they balama us. So they, of course we like to stay. But people that come and do stuff like this, whatever they like, whatever they like and have no respect for our culture, that's that's where it hurts. Or the community. And I or the community. You, I can feel you. This so, whole, that's, you know, that's, how you feel. That is where my Malama comes from. My, I guess cousins, when I run for public office, I get cousins with no like vote because they don't trust nothing. And it's hard to get there to say, hey, you know what, so what? Even the people we vote, somehow they get turned. Even my family. You know, it's, it's, it's what is, we need some sense of trust for the people who we vote for and who are put into this position to yes. take care of us. Yes. Amen. We need that. We need and, it. And in that regard, Thank you, Kanama. taking care of us. When you guys see, all right, hey, you got two kitchens. Yeah. You got two kitchens. Oh, we're going to cut that down to a wet bar. That doesn't buy it. You got two it. living rooms. You got two doors. That doesn't you got cut two it. Pools. Don't you feel a responsibility to ask for a question for these people? You know, and if, if you don't ask those questions, you're not doing your job. So whose head rolls, you know? Is it, and, and to me, if it cost the county $5 million to take this down, somebody's head should roll for that. Yeah. And, and where does the buck stop? You know, it stops at the mayor, he's not here. You know, it's, if you're that department head, and, and your assistant director or one of your planners signed off on this and without you knowing it, where, where does the buck stop? But you're saying the two kitchens is the immediate tip-off. Well, obviously. Uh, and of you, what oh, they well, were. we're going to make that a wet bar, which means we're going to pull the stove off. That's the tip-off, though. Come on, you guys. And you forgot to ask the rest of the question. Yeah, we're going to go. And the height. Yeah, and the height. And, and, the, and the fact that there's no drainage. And, and there's no retaining wall. There's so well, many questions. Well, yeah, but it's not really a retaining. So there's so many questions. Whose responsibility is it to ask those questions? 
You know, and whose responsibility was it? To ask it? Going yeah, forward, was, I got a feeling. It was our responsibility. It was our staff's responsibility. So that's why I said at the beginning. Just one more thing to say. Just one more. My auntie, she owns her home. She's the resident here. She wants one more kitchen, but she can't. I can trust her because she doesn't do anything yeah. illegal. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Right. And that's the truth of all of us here. I she, she, yeah, she can't get it, so she won't do it. So I would suggest you, know? you guys start looking at what misrepresentations he made in his application, and then take a look at those representations and put it back on him. See, if, you, if this has to be torn down, it's going to go to you. Yes. You know, right. maybe yeah. we share. Exactly. Maybe the county assumes so. Yeah. But to me, okay. he's the guy. Wait a You say that the number of bedrooms is inconsequential. Um, is is there no uh, nothing attached to the number of bedrooms? Uh, in putting? terms of parking requirements, yeah, how the parking requirements are based on the square footage of the home, not the number of bedrooms. Correct. Because on the on the plans that have been approved, there are two dens and there are two media rooms, and both of them have full walk-in closets and full bathrooms with two sinks. So those are misrepresentations on a professional level by the architect. Those are not, that's not two dens, that's not two media rooms, those are four master bedrooms. And so that is the kind of misrepresentation that the county should be able to use to have the architect pay the financial responsibility for shutting and tearing this building yeah. down. So just to, can I ask you a follow-up question? Just, just from the county's administrative perspective, like how many, how many people in a family do you say that the county should tell people that they're allowed to have? How many bedrooms and well, yeah, like like for instance, number of bedrooms. If if yes, you're going to yeah. represent to the county, okay. We don't know. Okay. We don't know. Well, I'm trying to explain. What I'm trying to explain is that that's a limit. Well, no, but I was. You didn't bring up the question. But I was speaking though, right? You bring up the jump. I was speaking though, right? Okay, hurry up. Yeah. So so the question is, what what is the there's a set of rules that are agreed upon by everybody in the state, in the county, of what people have to abide by. If they present something to the county that's within the rules then there's some level of limit of what the county can tell somebody. You're, you're lying to me. You're, this is not going to be a media room. This is actually a bedroom. But the problem like how, is the how intent. Far can you, well, you that's can, what I'm trying to say. If, if somebody comes in and they say, this is my intent to you. This is what I tell you my intent is. What is our, what is, where's the limit on who can be called a liar and who cannot be called a liar? How, like what, there's, there's questions that you can't, telling somebody, I don't agree that you have this many family members. Like you, you will never, you will, you will not be able to sell to somebody who will have this many family members. Like there that's are not, limits to what we can do in reviewing. That's, not the, that's, issue. that's not the issue. Isn't that, isn't well, that, 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 that was, that was, what was being discussed though. But you, you also, be, if, if earlier, earlier, you, you, earlier you characterized well, their ability to do this under allowing average community to be able to do something the, you was, actually referred to this as as a typical home no no the exemption line item in in a hawaii revised statute is seven thousand five hundred feet and i was basically saying that was intended statewide to cover all single family and how much homeowners. is this uh, I, don't, uh, I think it's 74 yeah right at the oh, right oh, there. oh how yeah, convenient oh. just to oh. start oh. 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 you know and then the height oh. thing is what's ruined the whole bay i mean that's what this has been that way from the beginning. Well, okay, no and let, 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 if, if I can just follow up. Okay, so say that square footage is is what you've done. Does that square footage include the empty cavities that are built into this structure? There are massive, uh, uh, full height Condo size. Uh, uh, rooms that have been added to this structure that are not labeled. And if you took away that those two dens and you took away those two uh, 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 media rooms and turned them into master bedrooms, then those empty cavity spaces could very easily be converted into a den or a media room and that would outpace the square footage limit that you're talking about. Well, we right. could take a look at those things, and those those might be changes that you're talking about that come. We can check on those things. Well, a, a media room that has a full bathroom with two sinks. 
Take a look. Take a look. Take a look. Look at the yellow ones. That's what he's trying to talk about. Same thing with the den. The den can be changed into another two class or different bedrooms. What are the massive areas? There's no part you got to ask those questions. Sam, can you show them the, the cavities? You put a family of 12 in there. Show them the cavities. Or 15 if you're going to have yeah. two yeah. beds. Where are they going to park? Nobody's asking questions. This guy, this guy got this through somehow without somebody asking a question. There, I mean, there were questions asked. I mean, it, for example, I, I hear you. I hear you. I know you. I know you. Yeah, Chris pulling out the document. So, like, you know, the context of the webinar, Director? they changed it down and something wasn't I'll show you on the cross section. You know, a member of the public. So there's a 17 foot ceiling height on the first floor. I'll show it to you. Okay, I'm going to change my plan. I'm going to I show you what they call the first floor, which is equivalent to an eight foot ceiling, a floor joist, and an eight foot ceiling. I understand, but I'll show you how they have a whole area in here that's equivalent to eight feet high, a normal ceiling height, that they're calling storage. So now you're in a county liability process, so we have to figure out how we're going to handle that. So it's, 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 I, I think that what we didn't you know, take the time to say is that this is not how we wanted this thing to go. So the first like floor ceiling height, that's an intermediate this is, this is staircase landing here. The it like supposedly goes no nowhere. Problem. You see how they but show now this floor joist? County's done All the way through this building is, is basically an eight so foot high it? dead space that has no light labels on it and they don't show any of the dimensions. So you're 17 feet from the first floor to the true second floor. Like these bedrooms are at this level right here. And the kitchen line is right. right. So they have, can you imagine having a bedroom downstairs with a 17 foot ceiling? Is there a, is there an elevation drawing that's missing? No, no, no. no, no, no. We just couldn't we could have been Where is the continuation? And then they kept getting higher and higher. And then it became like big going on. They have to see the elevation. I'm trying to get a nice little house and all that stuff. And we thought, okay, you know, but here's the question. I think it's going to be in the county and maybe the developer, maybe the architect. You know, so how do we start that conversation? Like I said, we've initiated the, the discussion with the, with the council because they have their discussions in committee. And to get something on a committee agenda, you start with a letter that gets referred to the committee, and we've done that. So as soon as... We're just trying to figure out the order. Yeah. Right there's now, all these discussions are going on. There's not a stop order. The first floor is 17 feet high. So those landing and the count risers on the stairs goes up to 8 feet, and then there's 8 feet full there. So they sold this huge dead space area. And I'm telling you, they, they, you look at their window layout, they're going to fill that in. So really it's one floor, two floors, three floors, and a roof deck, which I know by code is questionable in that end. And then what we got to do is they still get doodle water on the other floor. Director, I'm going to do this in front of all of you. Know, you, know, you, know, you, know, you guys know that 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 this question still the height is defined by the height of the building. Some say 30 feet. When it says two stories, the height of the story is not defined. So 35 feet is, is not a significant difference. You know, my goal in this is that we all come together. 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 And then you say it about the how much family do you need? Somebody wants to say something. I can't hear anything. I can't hear anything. I can't hear anything. Junior, do you want to bring this back? Do you want to bring this back? So this has happened before with the snow. It happened on the front. They're part of the process, right? They're part of the fucking on here. 
Then what if, and what if we had done something that was wrong? We would have a terrorist. Okay, it's happened twice on Front Street, and this was a while ago. They had a company called Just Do It. Hey. Okay, it was a, there was a coming, there was a, a property on Front Street right across from King Kamehameha, the third elementary school. And they were going to build a shopping center. And right across from the school, they were going to put a bar. And, f and the county issued them a permit. And it had to be denied because of the kids. Right, so then they had to pay just do it because just they issued them a permit. Then at Mala Wharf, it's almost in the gray area. I'm gonna, I'm, gonna, okay, I'm gonna have to come back to you. Where it's supposed to be. And so wouldn't you, as a, as your job, to look a little more close at the ones that are at the, at the very fringe of being Oops, appropriate sorry. or inappropriate? Yeah, 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 you need to do the Pono thing. That's, that's the discussion. You go back over there. Yeah. When, when does it occur to you to bring things to the, to the next level and we're, we're just going to have to have that discussion in new Um Well, like they've talked about is um, seeing, first of all, making a call on if we made a mistake and if we did specifically what is that. And what is the corrective action for that? So hey, for Michelle, example, talk about the walking here. Um, well, let's, let's focus in, folks. Like you said, asking what the next step is. Exactly. So for us, it's determining yeah. you know, if we make a mistake on the SMA exemption or signing off on the building permit enough to say we need to rescind those. And if so, what are the repercussions for that, which is going to be financial from the owner? And if so, will the council and the mayor consider paying out what it's going to cost to rescind a permit? Has so, that happened yeah. before? Uh, yeah, yeah. It there are there are frequent settlements that the county makes. Not all of them have to do with land use or mistakes, but yes. Um, so that will be, you know, it, someone asked why haven't you issued a stop work order, or are you going to issue a stop work order? If we did that, I wouldn't be surprised. And in fact, I'd, I'd be surprised if this didn't happen, that they would come right back at us with, uh, a, lot, with, lot with a bill. Sure, yeah, sure. And so before we get into litigation, we want to have that discussion with the county council and say, these are different scenarios that we're looking at and gauge them on where they are with it. Because if they say, let's just say they say, yeah, it was, you know, it was a mistake, it's not worth $10 million or whatever the number might be. It, it's not worth that, mistakes happen, it, it's not worth $10 million in taxpayer dollars, then that's kind of the end of it. <laughs> Unless we want to pull that permit and then get sued, and if they're successful, end up paying even more than that. So it has to be a discussion with them. Um, and you know, those meetings, a lot of the discussion will happen in closed session because it's a litigation matter, but testimony can still be taken at the beginning. So that would be your opportunity to come out and say, yeah, this, this might be a small mistake in some people's minds, but this is huge for us and you know, pay out what you need to pay out. So um, that's not my decision on whether to do that. That has to be a, a discussion with the people who ultimately make those decisions. So one, one thing, and I, I just don't want to let you guys off the hook, when you're talking yep. about trust, this developer is a bad dude, and this isn't his first rodeo. And that's on you guys to know when you're dealing with something like that. I mean, he's got a, he's got a nickname of Burn It Down Brown. So, and I know you guys know what I'm talking about. So, 
when there's a guy like that that's coming to your planning department, the ears should be perked up. The, the red flag should be flaring, and you should make this guy toe the line. Well, I've gotten at least one ethics complaint filed against me yeah. for being strict with someone who's a known violator. Good for you. By, Good. For Good. treating Good them for unfairly. Yeah. Good yeah. for you. So Good for you. There are repercussions <laughs> for that. Well, <laughs> thank you for the support. Oh my goodness. But Good for you. I mean, that's, that's what he's doing. I just have to say, like, for me, I'm one of the Wahinis who jumped in the trench. I'm getting bullied. But you know what? Bring it on. I don't have money like they do, but bring it on. Like Liz Cheney. <laughs> you know, I, I had enough already. It's enough. I want to read you uh, on that point. This is from this developer's legal counsel, a letter to his legal counsel. We're finalizing the Ukamehami consolidation and reconfiguration plan, and we're trying to get a handle on the SMA issue. Our goal is to come up with the best lot configurations possible to avoid SMA. That's who you're dealing with. That's 20 years ago. And they're still here, and they still represent. Montana Beach was caused by these people. Paloma Drive was caused by these people. $40 million in taxpayer money because of the revocation of permits. It's time to bring the trust here and send a message there. You said you guys got to look at the plans again? Uh, you guys got to look at the plans again? So well, there are two things I need to, well, three things I need to look at. I need to look at the retaining wall. I need to look at that possible uh, usable space that's right. not identified. Right. Um, and then the bigger question is to decide definitively if we made a mistake that uh, might warrant revocation. So those are the things I need to look at. I don't think it's the question of if. <laughs> There, there is something that went wrong, mm -hmm. definitely. One of it is it didn't come to the community. Most of all, we were not <laughs> notified. We had to come and look at it. But we appreciate you all coming here. Yes. My next question is, stop looking at the plans. Somebody's got to know how to look at this building itself and go through it. Go through this, this retaining wall, supposedly a retaining wall. Somebody's got to have the ability to know what the retaining wall is. Because mm -hmm. if that wall falls, who's going to be accountable? The county for letting that happen. Yeah, so Same with this. I mean, I'm just saying, yeah. no suggestion. Yeah. We're at this point where they're going to, they got to do something. You yeah. can't just, and from Beely Bay not to be front and center here, mm -hmm. they've had to have seen it come up. Why weren't they, why was there no red flag for them to come up and say, okay, something's going on. Mm -hmm. and, and that to me is kind of, kind of, you know, like, oh, well, there's another building. Mm -hmm. It's not just another building. It's another big monstrosity like Honolulu. They have all those big homes and we've got one right here in the Pili Bay. Mm -hmm. I speak up because I grew up in this area. I walk this road, this old road. There was only one road. I grew up in Honokahua camp. So for me, I failed. I failed this process. I'm not going to point fingers at anybody else. I failed because I did not keep up. But believe you me, I will do my best now as I go down to our church down in Kahana and pray this morning and ask the good Lord to give me the guidance, to give me the strength to do what is right for the community, but most of all to pray that he does what is right for the community. Mm. I pray for forgiveness for him, mm. that he sees his way. You've got to forgive, but also you got to love. Without love, this is nothing. Yeah. Aloha is love, period. Thank you. That's where the uh, money is from. So, um, you know, everybody's on the trust thing. And since I've been in Hawaii, I haven't seen any trust in anything that the county has done. You know, I only rent. You 
know, I'm a family of six. For us to even try to get a home, it's going to be about a million dollars. You know, people talk about affordable housing and things like that. And I think those words that you guys use are very strategic. Because from what we've heard is the county, oh, we can do this. Oh, no, the state said this. So you guys volley the ball back and forth, you know? And that's not fair. Trust? Trust is crazy because it's only trust to the next person that has that pocketbook to line those pockets of these fat cats, you know? I'm sick of hearing it. Trust. The queen trusted you guys. What did America do? We right here. These people don't have land right now. A lot of people, a lot of people I grew up with here don't live here anymore. Okay? Now, a guy that builds something like this, and you're saying that we would have to take on that bill? We're not gonna accomplish anything. We're not gonna get any money for him when he sells this. So why would we take on his bill? <laughs> for him doing what he did, every violation should go to the people. And I'm talking about that affordable housing that y'all can't seem to figure out. How yeah. about housing that's affordable? You know what I mean? These people come in on vacation like these kids that just almost killed everybody else. Mom, Dad, it's a great place across from the golf course that these people just built. You say I got trust? They got trust fun. <laughs> you know what I mean? Who can't fight that? Yeah. They got lawyers because what this guy's going to do, he's going to sell it to another that's, person. Yeah. That's a corporation that you guys don't want to fight because you said the money, $10 million. Well, he's selling it for 12 How about that $2 million come off top and come to the community? You know what I mean? There's things that you guys could do. Look at this parking right now. Where's our parking at Fort Smith for this day that none of these families can enjoy that lives on this island? Where's the motorcycle cops that fly up and down the road looking for local people? He could ticket every single one of these, well, these cars that ain't local. All these tourist cars right See here. The windows. They're not looking out. They go right back into our roads right here. They're not paving the same up and down roads. S turn. They ruin that thing, yeah? They cup out the beauty. You know what I mean? The affordable housing for the Hawaiians. What do they do? Next to the crapper. Luxury homes up in the mountain. Look at crap land. That's no aloha. You're going to build affordable housing next to the Judo house. America just passed a bill. AAPI. That's for protection for Asians and Pacific Islanders. Yes. Y'all need to protect these people. Stop robbing land for guys like this. Why? You know what I mean? Because that's all it is. I don't want to hear the volume. I need people that can do the job. You see these brothers that said more Hawaiians here. Why aren't they on one of these council boards to say no? These guys are doing this. We're right here right now. You can get volunteers. I'm pretty sure there's plenty of these brothers that are volunteering and say, hey, this guy's jacking up. I'm right here, I'm right now. In your city council, why aren't there Hawaiian representatives? Pure Hawaiian representatives that are there that say, hey, no, no, no. Our king said that only 50 years you guys can take land. The Marriott ain't gonna come down. The residents not gonna come down. They gonna keep making money and keep telling these boys, oh yeah, we're gonna do a little something for you. As long as we got buildings with the main plantation on it, nobody's gonna be free or live good here. I need to do better. But right. uh, Michelle, Stop, everybody's talking about trust. Uh, I think that's a widespread issue with residents. Um, we we're talking about seeing two kitchens, uh, then they fix it. So we know you're getting hoodwinked. Hoodwinked, you know from your own experience. Uh, you know, I saw you on the Zoom meeting with the uh, Wailea 23-acre uh, meeting about the community input on that and so forth. And I got a different sense of who you are. Now I'm thinking, you know, you're really in between a rock and a hard place because you're talking about having to go to Corporation Council. And Corporation Council has a reputation for, uh, actually the former director said to one of the council members, you don't know just when he was being approved, you don't know how hard it is we have to uh, protect the county from all these lawsuits. Well, there are cases where the county did wrong and that the Corporation Council has a reputation for fighting everything at all costs. 
and never being wrong. And so I think you're, that makes you a little bit, you know, between a rock and a hard place. The administration has certain values. There is a corporate culture and you are in the middle of it. And I think we all have to recognize that, um, yes, you are responsible, but you have your own obstacles. And I think maybe we, it would be good for us to try to address that if you're in a difficult position because you can't necessarily say what those obstacles are. But I think until you're able to be empowered to do things, if, if, there, if that trust is there, but your hands are tied, the public, we all need to know how can we help affect change in the administration and the culture at 200 South High Street to maybe empower you and others? And, and I think it's important that we recognize you could be in a rock in a hard place and you want to do the right thing. You well, suspect these problems. Yeah, it, it's my hands aren't necessarily tied. So I, I have the authority to revoke that exemption and our sign off on the building permit. I could go back to the office and do that right now. So what if Corporation but, Council advises you? Well, it's not... <laughs> Corporation Council can advise. <laughs> if I did that, then I would get sued by this property owner, and then that would go to the council, and uh, maybe or maybe not end up settling. If we don't end up settling, then it would go to court, and that litigation would have to play out, and eventually the price tag would be determined. We could do that. What I'm suggesting is to make that a lot simpler, hopefully faster, um, and more productive by just starting that dialogue with the council and saying, if I did these things, this is the likely outcome. Where do you fall on it? And if that dialogue can result in a cooperative agreement, then we're done. And it doesn't, the litigation doesn't have to play out. So revoking those things, I have the authority to do, but it would be really irresponsible of me to do that without discussing it with yep. the council okay. and the mayor and the county but going, But going forward, if you said to the council, look, we're in a pickle here now. This thing is such a mess, it's going to be a trouble. But what about the next one? Before the next one happens, council, because you have now a new charter commission, all these things are, are changing. There's maybe going to be a different administration coming up, after, you know, whatever. But to be proactive with the council now and say, this is a pickle, but what can we do? How can you help me not be behind the eight ball for all the projects that come after this? No, I think this is, you know, any time we get into a situation like this, fortunately it doesn't happen often, but when we do, we have to change how we do things to do what we think is necessary to make sure this doesn't happen. And again. you have our support, right? And, and that's... Oh, if they need know, empowerment. Yeah, it's not even empowerment. It's just our, our practices or our internal rules. So those are things that Jordan and I are responsible for doing in the wake of this. All right. Regardless of how this turns out, yeah. what can we do to make sure this doesn't happen again? Going forward. So everyone knows, currently there's a committee item that started in Shane Snancy's committee that I worked with Gina, who is from planning from years ago. SMA enforcement is now a committee item with Shane Sinancy's and now got moved to Kelly King's committee. So SMA, this issue is at the council level legislatively. We are going to close these loopholes once and for all legislatively. So there, this was not their problem from years ago. They're new to this. So we can't put the blame on them from Montana Beach and all those things. But we can work together with planning to make sure there's fairness in the process. The second part of this, through the mayor's office, we will be submitting, which the mayor stood out here two years ago with myself and Angus McKelvey, <laughs> supporting this plan for parking before that bridge was built. But Public Works would not work with us on creating a parking plan for an appealing. You can see my voice breaks because so much time has been put in to try to do things right. When in terms of this, we have a plan drawn by an architect as to how to turn this in a solution. Most people come to the council and come here and we have complaints. We have solutions. There's monies in through park fees. There's monies in through CIPs. There's monies in through, like, to collect all our taxpayers. If this bugger gets two million bucks to go away, 
There's monies in, in transportation right now through the feds. We don't like it. It doesn't taste good. But let's turn a bad situation, make this the first one that turns out positive. And we are doing that legislatively and administratively. Most of you all know me as Coach Chris. Your grandchildren I've coached for years and years, which is a question. Did he pay park fees? The junior can't even get a batting cage. Did those 12 bedrooms do, is that a trigger for park fees? For a, no? Why not? That's another legislative <laughs> issue that I am changing with Carla Peters. I am not using I collectively. Yeah. The park fee yeah. thing is not fair. How can you get 12 bedrooms here? Maybe you are a 12 kid family. Don't they come down to our baseball fields, yeah. Junior? So these are things that are already in play, so you know, at the council level. Our goal is to never have more of these meetings, because they're brutal on them, and they're brutal yeah. on them. And then, uh, the response to your uh, question of the answer about, you know, the money, you got to go to the council, to we'll get the money if you guys knock these things down, and all that stuff. Council yeah, approves all Yeah, the council's going to approve them, and all that stuff. Okay. They, they, they're not part of the whole system, right? Uh, uh, the reason why it's in wrong. Right? So now you guys went to the council for ask for money, our money, tax money, for go fix this problem. Yeah? And I told I told you this earlier. That should come out of your guys' ass. Your guys gotta pay. Your guys, you guys don't want to screw up. You know what I mean? If you, if you screw up something, that, if I if I spill something at, at work, I get right. fired. Right. Yeah. I get fired. Or gotta pay. You know what I gotta pay for? I gotta pay for the instrument or that, that kind. So that's that's you know what I mean. <laughs> maybe that's maybe then you guys will start right, doing God. your job. Right. Yeah. And maybe you'll be more serious about coming over here and checking out the problems. Sure. Instead, I gotta wait till us guys find them and they bring them up to you guys. I take you guys three months before you guys even come out here. Again, it's after the fact again. You know what I mean? The thing built, that's like the white kick brewing. After the fact, gotta go back over there, change the, the sewage thing or whatever, the grease, grease trap. Same thing. All this uh, thing is all after the fact that we pay because of the lack of confidence and trust we have in you guys. Because you guys put enough through this system. Okay? And we gotta pay for them. We get leakage. We get bust up. We get, you know, like the, the, the ejected well. So we do the water to go inside of that motion. Yes. Still level fee. But you guys are gonna take up to the Supreme that. Court. Gotta go pay for that. And for what? Why well, you go fix them? We end up we end up getting leaked in both ends. We still get the problem, plus we gotta pay for them now. Yeah. yeah. So that's that's what you're trying to get at. You guys can come away with you got high biblical words, you know. I don't know how to talk kind of words like that. But I know how to get things done. Locals know how to get things done. If the bugger's not doing them, yeah, brother, get out. Yo. We do them. Get out, bud. Bring the damn thing. Cut the damn thing off. Right. You know, bro, go kick the damn thing. You know what I mean? It's like you guys gotta start, you know, being accountable for your guys' action. And there's or lack of. There's an election coming too. A lack of. So, you guys said that there are environmental impact and research and everything when the buildings come up. So, with all these hotels and everything and the project back there, how does this sit? How is this a okay? Because anything that has this much plumbing is going to impact the environment. It's going to impact this beach right here. So how could y'all allow that and not see when the plumbing was being, this road has been for over a couple of years? How does y'all not see that when all the plumbing is here? Because an architect stamp it. And they take the stamp as being done. So anybody could have just stamped that basically. Yeah. Any, any person in the architect went to an actual office could have stamped that. If you're talking about waste water, it would have been like a legend. Yeah. 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 Is he under you guys? No, no, that's a private. They would have had to have gotten a plumbing permit. And when you get a plumbing permit that ties in, or actually the building permit, the water department would use that for where they're going to get their water. They have a meter that can serve all the plumbing that you're planning. So, if these guys are already hit to the uh, system, he already knows the guys just gonna snap them off or whatever. Hey, hey, so and so, so and so, and they're gonna snap them off and he's gonna continue to do this because once this house goes up, we know you guys aren't gonna make them take it down. It's never, nothing's ever gonna come down once it's up. So, in this phase, why it's like this, why can't you guys find him until he brings it down and comply with the rest of the neighborhood? This guy's house is ruined. And y'all just saying sorry. 
You know what I mean? That that word means nothing. Yeah, we're we're not sorry. saying sorry. Well, we're that's that's what it's coming down to. Oh yeah, he built this house. Sorry. But you're saying, you're saying that we had to trust this guy. For you. Well, There's no it's, trust. It's, you, has to be you can't just haul off and and Michelle just address this. You can't like. Yeah, you force a series paid, of actions to start happening. He paid 1.2 million dollars for the property. That's I don't know how much. much he spent on you know his architect and whatnot. How much money has gone into construction? Um, if he's carrying a loan on it, you know what he's paying in interest. So, at a minimum, if we were to say stop altogether, you know, tear it down, as some people are saying, we would be responsible. And it, yes, it is the entire uh, county, not just our department, would be responsible for that cost. Well, but so. business is business. I'm a businessman. And everybody had, yeah. takes a risk when they do investments, yeah. and everybody knows that. And, uh, you know, if some dire thing had to happen where he had to take off the top level, and if other things, he, he came to that expense in order to conform, uh, then so be it, because that's the, I own my company, I have to make payroll, I have to do the good thing. Mm -hmm. And it's challenging for government, because, like I say, I really think you are in a rock, between the rock and a hard place because it's a bit of a bureaucracy. I own my company, you don't have the same luxury, but uh, I think our point is you got to find a way, yeah. you know, and... But and each one of those there gentlemen has, over there, the, the architect and the developer, I can guarantee you have at least a million dollars in liability insurance, probably with another million good. dollar rider. If we prove, which we have, that there's been false representations in the process, they are overworked. They are getting, how many SMA permits do you get every year? Well, I, mean, too I can go to the side of that. It's mind boggling how many they get. But the point is, if you intentionally, intentionally do what that architect did, that is a hotel, 35 feet yeah. plus 10 is a hotel district standard under the code. They know it and they did it. So why not once we go to the side of where Let's give him his money by his land and whatever he's got on the sticks and stones and bye-bye and do something positive. Hold him halfway. But, but Chris, you and Sam do really excellent research. And not just on this, on a whole slew of things. And I do wonder, Chris and, and Sam, for all the research that you've done, and it hasn't really come to proper visibility in the council and the legalities of it with Corporation Council, and a lot of the facts that you're able to present and bring to the light don't seem to see the light of day at 200 what does it what does it mean if you have all these facts and, and the money, what oh i could tell you factually that and, and that's why we look for their cooperation there's been multiple bills and ordinances within the county the infrastructure i could go through it with you that have changed and stopped the abuse and stopped the harm on the public is anybody running around with a t-shirt around we we were going to make t-shirts it was called maui scrubs cleaning up maui county you know what i mean the point is we don't go out and publish what we're trying to do and what we've done. There's been many laws that have changed, and this will result, you'll see, in the same. I could show you chronologically, but, you know, unless the press, the Maui News, wants to put it on the cover, but I mean, we're not looking to be peacocks in this process. We're looking so to be purpose driven. You feel the administration in the county has been responsive to the information that you've presented? No, them? Corporation Council is blocking all of our no. efforts. I could tell that. Well, that's what I asked Michelle. I, I'll, say that, that I'll, that I'll, I'll say that. So, so that's. Corporation Council is the administration, well, and the council's council, though. So, like, they don't necessarily consult with, with members of the general public, for instance. They advise the administration and the council, and then let's say there's a litigative issue going on, their council talks to Corporation Council, but, but that's like, that's like some, let's say you had an attorney representing you, and somebody wants to talk to your attorney about you, that's just not how it works. Well, but he's a member of the public, and you're public that. servants, and well, whatever information you present, provides, should go to the I'm just trying to explain the framework of how As employees, we don't have the legal counsel. That's one of the problems, is that as an employee, if I go to blow the whistle on an item, say on this, I have to go to court counsel. I don't have an employee counsel. You mean that, in your current situation? Uh, in, that's the way the county structure works. We, as employees, do not have independent counsel you can go to through the personnel director and say, you know, I think there's a problem here and I really don't want to be in the public eye. I meant eye. before you were an employee. 
Yeah, we're talking it's about the same things right now. Yeah. I, I thought he was talking about his capacity yeah. as a citizen trying to communicate with corporations. You're talking about citizen with corporation council? No, or a... I'm, I'm saying that if you weren't an employee yes. and you brought this information that the county really wants to know, Correct. Uh, there should be a place where you can deliver that information. It will be re uh, accepted and reviewed properly and go through some proper channel. And even though he's just a member of the public, and he's not, you know, this or that. He does have information that's valuable. And I think what I hear you say is that it's difficult sometimes, but I think you're talking about multiple issues. Uh, let me you clarify. Said. For yeah. him to have an okay, audience. Answer. Okay, answer. Yeah. You, he would present that information to the administration, the planning department, or the council, and do both of those things. But, but interacting with corporation council and talking to them well, about Well, no, their not him directly, not no. That's... No, but I meant eventually okay. it gets to them, you guys. Oh, yeah, they, they would get involved. Like, let's say that, I mean, first of all, there's consultation that's going on already. But let's say there was also a lawsuit, they would be involved in that. So so any information that you're presenting to the to their client, Corporation Council's client, the department, is addressed. And if, if we need consultation with them about it, we talk to them about it. But they don't speak to members of the public no, no, about no, what their client not. is doing. But in this case, he has facts and figures and research sure. that he's done. Who does, what does he do? He brings that to Michelle? Yep. No. No, can. You can as a citizen. Can. I can't as a, as a what, staff member of the mayor. I can't. No, well, not, not I have ideally. To go, I have to go through. Chief, if he Chief was John staff. Q. Public, ideally, would he come to you with his research and all that stuff, or would he go to another department? Well, you get emails from the public all the time, all the time. And, and they've and been it, very it, responsive to this situation. Nobody is. They have it, not been resistant. It to, kind of depends on what the issue is, and. You know, we're always mindful of saying, oh, that's not my department. You know, that's the typical government cop out. You don't want to do that. <laughs> but if it's, you know, if it's clearly outside our authority, I'll respond and copy the director or the deputy from that department and say, that's not us. It's this department. Here's the director. And then they can respond to it. So um, we, get, we get emails sometimes dozens a day from the public. Director, can I ask a question about the, the authority? So, in this situation, clearly we had a staff member who signed signed the SMA permit exemption. Obviously, your name is underneath it. It says for you. Is that something that needs to be brought up at the planning commission? Because under under 205A down to the planning commission rules, the only one who has this discretionary authority to grant these things is you. How many people can sign? I can't go sign for the mayor, for example. How many people just administratively can sign? I mean, I would make sense if Jordan, um, the deputy heart would, would be one who could, but how many people within the department, because we have this in building as well, how many people can actually sign your name without your review of the documents? Uh, we have well, what, about what 70 employees, so all of them for various levels of things. Oh, if it's, wow. I'm returning this to you because of whatever, right. I don't need to sign those letters. But on a discretionary if exemption that closes the doors to public review, that employees can actually or, sign uh, your name? That is the division chief for that and division. Is that somewhere in, because this is all, you know, the SMA rules are under change right now. We look to you for that decision because you're the one having to stand here. But is it in the, is it somewhere in our rules that states in all departments who has the authority again, the deputy, if you're out or whatever the case may be? Because I think that's part of the problem. That's scary, actually. Because yeah, there's no scary. conflict Seven reviews, years. there's no, we don't Oversight. know anything about their backgrounds with this gentleman or any other project. I mean, we want, that's a lot obviously, your name got signed on this and you're having to take this, which no, we appreciate. Because I do, I'm the one responsible. Yes. It doesn't matter if I never saw it, it doesn't matter who signed off. We hired that person, we trained that person. Okay. And if it's their responsibility to sign off for something, they turn out to be wrong, it's my responsibility. But under the Planning Commission staff. rules, because this will lead to more change, how many people can actually sign an exemption, which is a huge threshold that we're going to be potentially dealing with here? It's a how many people thing. in your department not, can sign your... It's not your... a matter of SMA. It's just any department and any... The function of any department allows delegation. I mean, so it sounds like a, the organizational structure sort of puts you behind the eight ball because <laughs> it, in a case like this where it's something very critical, well, it could still same, slip by you because there isn't oversight in the, the organizational any structure. Company. I mean, Junior was saying if he messes up at work, he gets fired. You know, it, 
it kind of depends on the degree of the mistake. You know, if you did something <laughs> really bad, I mean, there was that recently the the truck that came and derailed the train. You know, obviously the person who didn't put on the brake is going to be fired, but it's the president of that company who says I'm ultimately responsible. But it sounds like you yourself need more oversight within the department on based well, on certain I, criteria. I what I was saying of using this as a as a learning moment is how to better scrutinize things that come in for yeah. exemptions and how to review building permits for height and other things. So it's you know, in terms of talking about, you know, firing staff, it's <laughs> well you have a lot hard to do because of the union, but it's really are people like not allowed to make mistakes. Well, it's no, going to it's cost not. you your job but, if you make a mistake. Yeah, and maybe no. this is a really bad mistake. No, nobody would it, say that. Was it, you know, purposeful? Was it, you know, okay. it, it's like, I, I, you know, we have exercised our... We don't know, but you know, the person who signed this goes way back, way back with the county, 20, 25 years. Is that and so? it should yeah. be, yes, it should, and she was involved with them. It should be looked at, yeah. is all I can say. For any employee, yeah. Yeah, decision I, I get employee, that. All just, of us. Should, and should, and I'm, I'm going to respond to you saying about, yeah, yeah, the book I screwed up real bad, which is just a real bad right here, and she has a couple trails of it. Yeah, she should be fired. Yeah. That should be an alarm, or, like, you know, you, you don't keep doing your job, we all fired. Social Security number, right? And if we did anything tax fraud or whatever, the government's on it. Why don't you have that type of permission? When they do something wrong that's not combined with whatever, it's flat. And you guys check it out. Because if y'all had a representative of these neighborhoods, they'd tell you right now, this guy's building higher. Hey, y'all need to come check this out. Because at um, this Kapalua Bay, the Bay Villas, when they were doing all that remodeling and reconstructing, there was OSHA on it. OSHA came out and they had to approve and make sure that the scaffolding and everything was right. Bathroom, where people gonna eat, how they clean up. Something this big? Where was OSHA? We paid well, for but, the, but the system, you know, most of these things have simple fixes. If we can just treat this like a B and D or a TVR, then anybody who applies for an SMA permit would it be that big a deal to put a little? He's got his sign, a little sign in there to say that somebody has applied. None of this would have happened because people then nobody follows the planning commission websites to see what exemptions were already granted. There's a simple solution to SMA. Just put public notice and let people, maybe one them wouldn't have a problem, but we never would have gotten here nope. with just a simple sign that's like a real estate agent size sign, which we do on all those other permits. Can you please change that process <laughs> and put public notice so that the people can speak before the harm occurs? But also notification of these kind of meetings and this kind of thing. The only reason we just ran across it. I mean, we didn't, it wasn't anything and that's I made why there's just a few of them. Yeah, I thank made you. You follow all, Junior's all, website? Well, I, did, I saw you. Well, that's what it was, Junior, on your website. Okay. I kept calling these guys and calling these guys, calling the mayor, calling Sandy Balls, calling the departments, keep on calling them, and getting just, again, pointing the fingers and all that stuff. Oh, that's in, that's in public work. Oh, that's in planning. Now, public work planning. And then I just came, we just came to the point, and then I asked her when she's available. And she gave me a certain amount of days and times. And I said, okay, good, then you can come talk to the people. Right. And this, again, should have been done in the very beginning. Right. Okay, and then they, yeah. I, I, and then I'm it a, wouldn't be like this. Huh? And then this wouldn't yeah. happen. So I'm pretty sure people that was calling your office and said, hey, what's going on? Nancy, he was calling. That should have been, I, I, I hate I'm to sure say Danny the should have. Yeah. Somebody should have came out at that time. Because yeah. I know people were calling. People, Danny was calling. Yeah. So, I, I just like some people, they forget about us here in Lahaina. I don't know, yeah. you know, I gotta go to Wailuku to do shopping, and I, and I, I regret it, but I still gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> you know, but, you know, but, you know. And I think if you guys, if he would let you, do you see a for sale sign in front of that? You ought to go into Danny's yard and look up. Oh. I mean, it's a tragedy. He built, he built, everybody Beautiful. knows that. He's built that, his family and so on. And now you just to stare at that all day long, the toxicity that goes through you. Yeah. To be you know, peered on all day he long. He should tear down that real estate sign and we get back to something hopefully very reasonable. Okay. Thank, you. Thank you very much. Thank, Thank you, you guys. Appreciate, appreciate it. Appreciate everything. Everything. Director, I, I would encourage you as well to take a look at the windows. If you're looking and trying to assess the viability of those vacant spaces, take a look. What I can't understand 
is that the windows that they are installing are not the windows that are in the plants. That first story is 17 feet ceiling. And they only have a window that is for a, a typical eight foot ceiling. And so in the plans, it has a giant window that occupies that entire 17 feet. But what they've installed is only serviceable for a normal story. That leaves the opportunity later, after the fact, to punch new holes and add new windows to service those vacant areas and turn those into living spaces. And that would violate the 7,500 square feet. I believe, Jennifer, if I believe yep. within, the, within the administrative rule that the public works, I think, or building department has, they can do a site inspection at their own if they think something's not according to plans. I think a walkthrough by the planning and building department would be just to kind of go point by point. So, I'll get one thing. Okay. I, I, I want to ask this question right, when had plan when had our rest of us. But you get, get us right now. But I know you say to looking for solutions. You know, looking for what we can do about this thing. Even though I chop you guys ass about the few five million dollars, you guys gotta pay them. I know it's not gonna happen that way. You know what I mean? So well, what can we do to make this can we, we are, what's the options? Can we knock them down? Can we tell them to come down? Like I think you said, yeah, you maybe what if he did come down to the thirty feet? or a legal height, you know, all this kind of stuff. So I don't like leave this thing, you know, because you, you guys spent <laughs> you have to cross over what we don't like do, you know, so you <laughs> did it. So thank you. But I like leave this thing here because I'm going to keep calling you guys up ready, ready before you even reach your apartment. You, 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 you'll get another call. I want to get a solution. I want to be able to say it because there's a lot of people who knows about this in yeah, the community. Are, but it, they, they, they cannot come. come. They right. cannot come. They, right. cannot, they all work. You know already. We all work. You working. You know what I mean? It's just it's hard to get a people here, but I, I just glad you guys did. But what can we get out of here? But yeah, I'm gonna ask you guys, not you guys. What what you guys will be satisfied if bringing it down to 30 feet, all the way down to zero to get that popular and hit solution? Um, you know, what do we? You know what I mean? What? Yeah. Yeah. So, because I know you brought up the minimum height. You know what I mean? All this kind of stuff. So. Again, it's not, it's not whatever we decide here going to happen. But we should be able to talk to the public about this. The public should have an input. I know cause we, we ask backwards, we get, them, we get them after the fact. But the problem is some of these guys do stuff that they're not supposed to do. But they I know guess, they're going to get their hands right, slapped. They're right, going to get a good deal right. of what they want. I deal with this guy. I deal with this guy. I just didn't talk that to is, That isn't price. always true. At Paloma, no. at Paloma yeah. Drive, the developer originally was like, it's all you county, it's all you county. It was proven that their plans were done in violation of grading ordinances. That number came down. They wanted originally 22 million. I was part of that negotiations. It ended up at 13 million uh, for the 50 lot subdivision, which still sits there 10 years later. So it's not always true that there isn't, you know, he's not going to be able to say I want 10 million because I could sell it for 10 million. If there's misrepresentation, there, there are examples where the county has and court council has in fact negotiated people down to a reasonable settlement, holding them responsible for their side of it. But so how many people do stuff knowing they're just going to get basically a slap in the face, they're oh, going to get a fine? No, no, no. I don't know, but I, oh. I go to site-specific issues as to what happened and what was the result. And in those instances, it was citizens group who came forward, the grading plans were violated, the civil engineer stamped the plans, why he would design that project in violation of grading, who knows. But all those things got entered into the negotiations. Of course, a lot of it behind the scenes. Um, but the developer is afraid of screwing the county. Are they afraid of screwing the county? This is what we want as a businessman. If somebody screws with me, then they are going to have a consequence. I am an honest bit business person, but if somebody does something bad, then they know they're going to have a very bad consequence. And I'm wondering, are the developers afraid of doing something wrong and catching uh, the penalty from you, or do they feel like there's a decent chance, 40% chance, that they're going to slip something through because of the weaknesses chance. in the system? Well, some people would say that, but you see. I think that there are yeah. some honest uh, developers yeah, some, and some yeah. honest applicants, and then there are others that push the boundaries, um, you know, get away with what they can, and then maybe even go beyond that. Um, I hope you can identify the areas where you ha are vulnerable to people tricking you. Identify those areas as a business person, for example, 
and make sure that you're not vulnerable and take the upper hand. Yeah, I think that's what I'm trying I mean, to say. It's, it's tough in a government bureaucracy because you don't own, you're not private business. Yeah, as Jordan but was saying still, earlier, it's, you know, it, we get lied to all the time. Yeah, Especially if we're citing someone, oh, I didn't do that, or oh, my landlord said I could, or whatever the excuse might be. Um, and so you think, oh, okay, if people are like that, then you really have to be suspicious and this. And then the good guys are penalized for that well, attitude, as, you know what I mean? I have to say, as so a, if you were ever in business, you would know. You can pretty much tell when somebody is going to pull, is trying to pull the wool yeah. over your eye. You can pretty much tell, and this is one of the challenges for people in government, because if they're, they've never been in business, and they've never dealt with business people who are shrewd that way, you are a little bit at a disadvantage, but I'm just saying, going into it, if you know that, mm -hmm. then you can figure out a way with an organizational structure or a consultant who can help you with this, because I can tell you, I don't get, generally I don't get screwed. As a matter of fact, my customers pay me in advance, and I don't want to get screwed. And they love me, and they come back. Well, in but this situation this, here, there is there is history. Yeah, yeah. There is history with this consultant and so on, and this may be the example where we could use. There's okay. history so we, we, of we're harm to the, the county. We're, we're taking it to the end, sorry. Yeah, go ahead. We're not stopping. But I don't think that they're both from private practice. I don't think people walked into his father's land planning firm and said, you know, find me the best way to schnooker these guys. Most people who do, you know, don't really roll in, roll that way. There's a few here. Unfortunately, they keep doing it. Do you think that guy did? Nah. No, the one really? I just rolled, rolled <laughs> the, the one I just read to you, the, he, the, the law firm that's behind this has led to at least four legal actions on this, on this, in this county that SMA was at the root cause of the dispute. Olawalu, Utamihami, Montana Beach, right here, Hui Road E. It's the same person. It's the same law firm. So and ironically, one of the one of the partners of the gonna, firm used to be with court counsel. They are experts, but they get caught every time and we end up paying. I can prove everything I say factually. Yeah. It's in the papers, just Look at look them up. It sure would be and, nice to and, not be a, these guys can't screw us. Right. I can't stand being a businessman and being screwed by somebody th that you gets know away with it, it. it gets away with it and stuff. I just don't like being uh, that taken advantage of. And it's just like you're talking about that, that de development on that side, the one that was. Yeah, the one yeah. You said when you we were on the Zoom meeting yeah, with Wiley, Twenty Three Acre. They, they they don't need to do the whole EIS because the department. We support them with the well, SMA. So again, they go find. Go, what if we find some thing they screwed up on after? You know, well, because and then what? Who the pays? Trust issue comes and then from, who frankly. pays? Who it's pays? Us again? Eh? Again? We gotta pay again because they when they, they say, oh, they don't need to do the EIS. That's why we gotta make well, sure we make this an example and make that one example. And you We're not the planning commission three options, and one of them was to I think reject and get a further environmental study. But it's maybe procedurally. Can't you say we want it before you offer them the option? Can't you say, based on this property, we think this is what it should have? Why do you put it on them? Can't you? Don't you have the authority to demand it yeah. yourself? Well, we make recommendations. But, but you don't. It's their, it's their call. It's the planning commission? In this particular case, yeah. So they have authority over you, basically. Um, basically. Well, de facto. They're, yeah. And they're not elected. <laughs> They're appointed by the mayor, but, which is a whole other problem. Well, appointed it, by the mayor and confirmed by the county council. So there's wow. every planning commissioner. Yeah. So now, now again, the council comes up every couple of times already. Yeah. County council. County council. County council. Okay. Now, how are you guys supposed to explain to them that they might have to give out five million dollars for for this dumb mistake? Okay. You know how long it took me for call you guys out every day, five times a day. You know, hey, what? Go, oh, hey, ho, and then, you know, point finger here, go here, go here. How are you guys going to explain to them? How are you guys going to be able to explain to them about how what they what they, you guys are screwed up on and what he wins in front of you, and then the we as a taxpayers? Because you know, you no, know, no, I I talk to all my council people. They freaking they're on speed dial. Okay, <laughs> the only one that really answer Yuki. Only you can answer my phone. 
Hey, buddy, I'll take an answer on my phone. I don't care if it's slow. But this guy is answering my phone. I call him right now. You see him. I can call him right now. They're going to answer. I'm going to tell you. So, I'm going to be on big, firm decision, you know, behind it. Because they know how much I work I do in, in this. They know we're having this today. They know. Okay? How are we going to get them? What are we going to claim? To make it so we the right the right thing gets done. Okay, again, we're, and we gotta come back to the community. Okay, when we maybe not go stand in the hot sun, you know, maybe time. But I was pissed off, so I never like put the tent up. I was gonna put up a tent, but to freaking well, we're not in cancer and freaking send the balls in cancer. They fuck them. They stand in the sun. I get the tent. The tent said what? I was ready to put them up. I was all pissed off. I was really pissed off this morning. But what I'm saying is, what kind of what kind of um, what do you guys get? Option. What kind of option do you guys get right now? So you kind of should be telling us, you know, kind of like what you guys gonna do? You guys gonna give him a kick in his ass? You guys gonna tell him broke the thing down, cut the bugger off? What? What? What's the? What's the, what? We gonna get out of this meeting? Not just we oh oh yeah we agree to disagree blah 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 blah. What are we gonna get out of this meeting? Action plan. Well, yeah. I mean, what? <laughs> What are the big issues to you guys? I mean, I went over here to look. look. <laughs> if you lower it down, no. If you're looking, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no. Literally, options, we'll listen. We'll listen. Yeah. You said lower it down. So lowering it down. I heard him so. Making it the height yeah. that it's to, supposed to be within the neighborhood. Feet, I don't know if that's going to be good enough for you guys. Well, well, but, well, but then that's what the rules are, and we've all mm -hmm. abided by them during the whole. Well, look, the problem is. I know, you're, but you're, at this point, no, yeah, I, you're I trying to. You're, you're trying to be reasonable. We understand that, and nobody. I mean, look, the guy. We think the guy deliberately did this, and whatever. He's going to get away with something. We know that, and you can't like turn it into some endless thing. As far as what we would find excessive, I think Chris and Sam could speak better on that. I would say the third level. Something fishy about the grade. <clears throat> and there's something fishy going on with the floor plan and I think probably you could get somebody in there forcefully to negotiate that and I think these guys I can tell you we're not going to be satisfied with anything that you're able to accomplish here because it's okay. too far gone well, we're not going we know that that's what I want to know yeah. so something there some may be room I don't know there may be room but well, if I came back to you guys and said, hey, they're going to they're gonna knock off the elevators and the stairwells, it's still going to leave a bad taste well, in you. Well, That's not no, well, no, 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 they have a right to, if this turns into a 30 foot high according to residential standards as a single family home, they get rid of the mass and, and come in with a Hawaiian hip roof or whatever their architects do. There's not much we can say that you can't build your home in conformance with the code. Is he going to want to do that? Is that financially feasible? Who knows? But the flip side of that is, you know, director, in the in the SMA permit, they show 100 yard. They show no cut and fill. In the building plans, they show 4.5 feet of fill. So it still comes down to is that, you know, that's just like Paloma Drive. It's it's grade, original or proposed, whichever's lower. So if he's up here now at 45 feet plus five feet of fill, he's at 50 feet wherever that's falling into play those two plans right now that's why we're hoping the public works director was here one of the questions is and we i think you know this from the public works side the plans for development after sma is issued then they go for permits to build it they don't always go back to the planning department so your people can check to say is the construction according to what we approve so we have all these potential representations that will allow you to make a discretionary decision. Is this in compliance with the code? Is it in compliance and so on? And so that comes down to, do we have to even negotiate with him? If they misrepresented something, then he gets a notice. I mean, if the mayor, for example, had somebody or you review this, I'll let Sam, you were going to ask that, ask a question about that. I think she's asking let, for a wish list from you. No, they'll she get can that. Go back well, to what is the wish list? Not necessarily from, from, oh, from yeah, everyone. From the group. Oh, from from the group. Oh, oh, you know, oh, oh, yeah. I think it, you want a wish list so that you can take that, and it's not your decision. This is what you're hearing from the public, and that's what you need. What are you hearing from the public? Okay, here's this, this. It's not my personal opinion. Right. That's what you need. Right, because... That's, 
you know, I totally get height is an issue, but what height is the issue? Because the zoning code says two stories. Right. Typically, that's 30 feet. That can be 35 feet if you have high ceilings. So if we say 35 feet, not where the top of the window is, the bottom of the window. That's I'm assuming where that, you know, where that trim is. Yes, well, it is. Well, you're arguing, you're arguing the point about that, and I understand, but that's not what I'm, my point is that you need to get a list, yeah. and you're not being asked to make the decision, you're being asked to be the messenger, you are partially, you know, you're responsible, but I think you need that list in black and white, instead of it being nebulous. It's not even a list so much, it's, I mean, there are a lot of things that are upsetting people. I'd call that a list. A basis to revoke and all of that. So if we're going to try to work something out with the owner that says, hey, we have a basis to rescind your permits, but if you do these things, then it can just be a friendly resolution. But you're asking what is going to make these people right. happy. And I think you have to get an answer to your question. That's exactly And it. that's the list I'm talking okay. about. That's okay. the list I'm talking about. And and what is going to make everybody in, happy? In terms of authority. So where does the buck stop? So if, if the mayor were to instruct you to issue a notice, so if the mayor were to instruct you to issue a notice uh, or, it, or, or re revoke the exemption, uh, would you do that? Um, well, I, that's not a yes or no question because the mayor wouldn't instruct me to do that unless we had a basis and we understood what the financial and legal implications of that are. So it's not just, if he does this, what are you going to do? It's doing that is part of a larger process, which also involves the council. So um, if through that discussion with the council and the mayor, the decision is, yeah, we're willing to pay the price. If you revoke, then I'll revoke. But uh, I'm not just going to do it on my own authority, or mayor wouldn't do that in a vacuum. It has to be part of a discussion. Well, so revoking um, has a, uh, a, a, a very high price tag attached to it. What if it were just simply a violation? That, that would be, uh, there would be a different basis for the revocation, um, but there would still have to be that discussion in the financial and legal context, where if we do that and say, we're revoking because you said you're going to do this, but you're doing this instead, you know, you misrepresented, you lied, whatever, we're revoking, they're not going to go, oh darn, you caught me. I'm going to tear this down. They're still going to sue us. And so we need to understand what the legal and financial implications of that are. Maybe we're not going to have to pay out a big amount, but we're still going to have to go through the litigation process. So we, we have to have a fuller understanding of that. Doesn't the you can make their life very difficult, and they should know it, that you have the ability to make their life very difficult. They can make my life like well, they also have, hold on you guys, they, well, but that's, that's, Director, you also have the ability, which is a good thing, in the SMA rules, before lawsuits happen, the, the department, when, let's say you set, you sent out a notice of violation, you can go into dis dispute resolution, can you, before any litigation, I mean, isn't there a system that allows, on, on fines and or penalties, even if it's a dollar or a hundred dollars, it doesn't matter, the point being is, doesn't the planning department through the SMA rules have the ability to Go and avoid litigation if they uh, attempt to avoid litigation. You don't need litigation to resolve something, correct? We can issue notices of violation. And then, um, if there, are, you know, if there is evidence enough to do that, right? And that would come with bonds. And does it always right out of the gates, or is it just a notice first? It doesn't always throw. You don't. It doesn't it always. We can do a notice of warning first, or can go you? straight to violation. Isn't that what they did in all the wall? I mean, they gave a notice of warning, and then they ultimately corrected the problem. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, I think that's what it, they. I don't think fines were issued there, but warning went out. So on and so on. Point being is, we're all trying to not have the litigation mushroom this thing into more than 
It already is. And of course there has to be cooperation on the developer's side. That's why I'm not just giving. So is there a way like if these people choose to like they get it up, it's going, the family's in for one month, then they sell it. The next person comes in, they turn it to the hotel like they knew it was gonna be. Can you guys then find them for that? And uh, they keep would, finding they wouldn't them. be able to get a hotel just by giving them. Well, once they bust your open doors or window, I see people renting out units all the time. They can't keep track of all the uh, illegal units right now. So if these people are on um, one of the little web pages and they're like, hey, you can rent out a room right now on vacation. Here's another room. 12 rooms in there and they're renting them out. How I think it's pretty know? obvious there's a yeah, lot of eyes on this project. Yeah, <laughs> but I'm just saying, like, that's going to be a difficult thing to walk. Like, but, but, like, how do you know what I mean? Like, you're going to be the neighbors for his own benefit. Bring it up. Yes, how would you Of course, to everybody who know that it's only the two-story thing. And then everybody sees that and everybody's watching, you know? And so we're watching. We're going, wow, look at this. And we go, no, it's going to get taller. And they're like, no. And then someone goes, oh, yeah, they're going to put the pool on the roof. We're like, what? Yeah, anyway, it's just one of those things. <laughs> and they sell it. Walk away from it after they've stirred the pot and made everybody. Mm -hmm. I mean, I know that's the way it happens all over, but never go They've already stated a new one, basically, including the key up. Thank you very much. No, I don't think so. Sorry, yeah. I try not to get out of the wall. Yeah, that's right. We just are upset. I mean, that's the whole thing, and we don't know who else to turn to. Very sad. Very sad. What's your name again? Tennyson. Tennyson. Yeah, I don't think I've ever pointed fingers on this one. What is that? This one, this one I've always said. Oh, yeah, but you're the one doing it.